Welcome. I am Javier Olivares. I am the VP of Sales at Base Boss, and today we're here with David Lee. He is the designer, president, and co-founder of Base Boss. Hi. Okay, David, um, let's talk a little bit about you. Um, who is David Lee? Can you tell us a little bit about you? I was born in South Africa, and um, my parents were British, and moved here in 79. My father was an architect and a, um, an audio hobbyist. And so I, I guess I picked up some things from him and, and, and I got very deeply into the hobby and uh, pursued it as a career after people sort of recognized what uh, my interest and my level of involvement and they offered me a job. And so I started working in audio and I haven't really worked in anything else since about 1984, something like that. Why did you choose to go into this industry? Why the music experience? As a kid, you know, being an immigrant and not being familiar with the culture, um, you know, I needed to find my escapes because I wasn't, you know, um, in the in the social cliques and stuff. And music was my sort of um, involvement is my escape and it was, you know, my, 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 my pleasure, my joy. So, um, I didn't have much in the way of resources, but it, it provided me such a, um, a, a wonderful experience, got me hooked on the idea of music as an experience. Um, and as I progressed through that, I, I, I found that I could expand upon that. I could provide that for people. That's what I wanted to do. I want to say, this is how cool it is. And I was not into drugs or anything like that. And I wanted to have those intense experiences. So music was sort of how I could have those more and more intense experiences and uh, making it better and more clear and louder and deeper was how I got there. When you designed your first product, why did you decide to take that first step? I guess it really depends on what we're going to call the first product. Um, the first product that I designed wasn't a mass-produced product. It was custom loudspeakers. The, the, the early stuff where I started was building custom pieces for specific installations um, and solving special problems. And the real reason why I started was because I found that the products that we could buy at the time were not a good value. They didn't deliver what I wanted in terms of the sound, the, the depth, and the, the, the level that we wanted to achieve and the reliability for the money that they cost. Um, there were some things that, granted, they were a great value if you look at the, the level, the sound pressure level, and the price. It's like, wow, you know, that's, that's a great value. But it was never satisfying on a qualitative point of view. And on the other side of that, there were certain things out there that were, that's really, you know, qualitatively good, but it was ridiculously expensive. So I was like, can we, can we kind of <laughs> bring those things together? And at the time I was working in a high end hi fi store. That was the first work I did in audio was in high end hi fi and, uh, high end hi fi store. Um, technically, the earliest thing I did was working in a car stereo environment. And so that was like, you know, super intense bass stuff. And then the, the, the same company uh, in, the, in the high and hi-fi and home theater market. But that's the stuff I would listen to day in and day out. And then when I went out for entertainment's sake, the quality of the sound that I experienced in the concert venues or nightclubs was terrible by comparison to the hi-fi it was louder but it was terrible i was like no 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 we need this quality at that level <laughs> and that was kind of the genesis of what we were what i started to try to push towards what goes into your design decisions my history has not been one of um you know massive resources uh so one of the most important things that i try to do with every product is to make it as dense in terms of what it can provide um, as possible. Um, I call it ruthless practicality. So uh, when, when I go into designing a product, I, I want to I, I get my best understanding of what results I want to achieve. 
and then filter through every component and every design choice so that every decision that's made is uh, made towards achieving that goal and every single element of the product has a reason for being the way it is. Um, and realistically, nothing is in there that's wasted. Everything has a reason, everything has a purpose, and everything is intended to make it better um, and not, lug you know, not, not luxury and silly stuff, but just strictly functionally better. What do you enjoy the most about your job? I like pushing the envelope. I like pushing the experience to a new level. Um, whether that's you know creating a, a sound field that's extremely intense for like ten thousand people, and and they're just screaming and 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 uh, having a great time, and they just will never forget that experience. That. Creating products that facilitate that is is great. Um, developing techniques for uh, whether it be uh, measurement and alignments and tunings and stuff like that is is uh, is another thing that I find uh, interesting and, and challenging. And then um, creating the the you know designing the pieces, understanding all the little nitty gritty details, and 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 having. Not just a deeper understanding, but also a broader understanding of how humans interact with sound. Um, not just the sound itself. I mean, that's a whole acoustics is a very complex uh, uh, subject. But then there's the psychoacoustics and sort of linking all the pieces together. I, I, I get a, um, I enjoy sort of connecting those dots. And, and realistically, I really like the idea. The, the, the process of teaching people that, not uh, in, in sort of a context like this, but in the context of having them experience that product uh, mix and being able to do what they want. And then they're, they're, they're sort of eyes open. They go, wow, okay, so that's the possibilities. And, and those kind of things are awesome because people suddenly realize, oh, they can do so much more than they thought they could. Those kind of things are also a, a great part of what I get to do. Some people say that David Lee is crazy about bass. Do you agree with that? What does that mean? The thing about bass is it, in, in, the, in the audio acoustical kind of world, it's like the final frontier. It, it, it's, the, it's, the, it's the barrier up, on, up against which we're constantly pushing. Um, it's the biggest wavelengths. It's the longest time durations. It's, it's, the, it's the most amount of air that you have to displace. And, you know, I, I like to say reality doesn't have a high pass filter. The, the deeper you can go and the more of that that you can provide, the more real, you, the more accurately you can sort of create the experience of, of whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether it's, you know, explosions in a movie or a kick drum. You know, it, there, there's a huge amount of low-frequency information that we're filtering out in most of the um, production that we're doing. And this, there's, a, there's a whole subject on the history of, of, of sound reproduction, but, but essentially pick a frequency and for every octave that you go down, for every halving of the, of the wavelength, you need to move four times more air to achieve the same sound pressure level. And so, you know, we're pushing 20 hertz at this point, and having enough cone area and excursion displacement to be able to produce those levels at those frequencies, that's double what you need at 40. I mean, it's four times what you need at 40. It's, you know, it's like 16 times what you need at 80. So is it crazy? Well, I mean, no. It's just that that's the, the sort of the the demand and, and it, it, it exists partly because of technology for being able to record and, and, and play those notes. Um, and as that technology came into its own, particularly with digital equipment, um, there was just like, okay, how do you get there? How do you get there? How do you reproduce it? You can do it at low level. You can do it at a level that, you know, you can hear it in headphones or whatever. But 
take a step way back to the 11th century, and they were making giant pipe organs that would do 16 hertz, you know, foot pedal notes that would just vibrate the building, and it gives people goosebumps because it, it those kinds of low frequencies are not common in nature. Very rare. Thunderstorms, earthquakes, um, you know, volcanic eruption, that kind of thing. These are the kind of things that bring about those kind of frequencies. These are not things that you hear on an everyday. Maybe if you're something happens like a giant tree falling down, you know, and the rumbles and things like that. They bring out your emotions and they really trigger your pituitary and they trigger your adrenaline. And so those are the ways that we can really enhance that musical experience. And you, you, you've had the limitation, you know, when, when, when sound systems were powered by tubes uh, only and excursion on drivers was in, you know, tiny, tiny distances that they could move to now, we have the ability to do more and more and more. But who's going to be in front? Um, and I like to be in front. I like to have the ability to do what the cutting edge artists want to do. I want the cutting edge artist who's pushing the envelope for that low frequency to be able to use our systems to translate that to the audience because there aren't really any others. And certainly nothing that comes close to the practical approachability and price range that we can do it in. And so that's, that's why I like to be crazy about bass is because the other end is much easier. Moving that much air, involving that many people and just creating that intensity, being able for somebody to create, you know, that music that does that and then translate, that's fun and exciting. And that's as you know, that's the kind of crazy that I don't mind being.